Check, check. All right, that's better. All right, welcome back to Camps Canada. It is um, April the 28th, 2019, and we are now kicking off our first Sunday night show, so most people are not used to seeing us on check, at check. this All time. All right, that's better. All right, welcome back to Camps Canada. It is. See, that's when you know you got multiple things going on at one time. Um, try four screens and a bunch of other stuff to keep plans on. But uh, tonight's show is going to be about seed germination. Um what to expect clearly i've got my plants out here uh for a reason and i will put uh the proper lights on them uh at the same time we're going to be doing a lot of dabs and uh, talk about high voltage which is a, a a company that that really is taken over british columbia i'm not sure if they're available back in ontario um you know at what cost but um we'll definitely be talking about um high voltage just because uh just because their, their product warrants um in my opinion I almost greened out on one of my shows actually <coughs> with that one so anyway um during this time nor normally i would have kept just the music playing and screwing around um but i gotta kind of keep my head in a proper headspace to do this kind of stuff and it's not easy martin yoner i would hope i'm not buying some sort of cheese weed i think if you were ordering from a licensed producer and buying their lower grade stuff then you're going to get some cheese weed i think if you go to your um, dealer in your biggest cities on the corner block you're probably going to get some bad weed but aside from that you should be good um you know uh, for us again we, we we always show what we're talking about it's just i got a, t a lot to talk about tonight but what i'm dabbing on and probably what's knocking me on my ass is is the high voltage and uh, that's just really it. the uh, the long and short of it. Like high voltage is a very uh, it's it's just a potent. Um, I have both the uh, the diamonds and the um, light resin, so you guys can see that for yourselves. It's high voltage there, and then they also have it well. Where is the label? They have it well labeled. And then of course, if you flip it around, you can see for yourselves. And this one, I believe, is alive. Yeah, it's alive. It's hard to tell with these glasses on. But as soon as you open it, the chirps are all there. It's trapped. And it's, you know, for $40, you really can't go wrong here in the in the province of British Columbia. Um, that seems to be the, the general retail rate for, whoa, most of the dispensaries. Um, so, yeah. Um, you guys can share this around for a sec. I don't want to cut the commercial break right away. It wouldn't do me much good. Um, I don't even know where the hell my dab dab tool went. There it went. I'm just gonna do a dab. And uh, anyway, seed germination is something that, um, as you can see, I even got a couple of young ones up here that, though they're falling over. Uh, anybody that's done natural sunlight uh, seed germination would understand that that's exactly what they do. They stretch and they elongate for the light and then you have to bury them deeper and let them go or stilt them up on something. Eventually, they'll, they'll, they'll take hold if they're under the right lighting conditions and climate control and not being stuck in the dark for too long. And um, right now, these ones are under just natural conditions. So they're acting the way that they're acting uh, indoors. Um, which is common so this stuff here I believe is their crumble no this is their live it's almost like a, it's almost, it's almost like a cream I mean, it's like a creamy uh, a creamy crumble but whatever now in the write up you guys notice I mentioned uh, Mr. Chris Bennett um, for good reason uh, he, I, I had a chance to sit and talk with him at the, down at the uh, at the beach in brief, but I want to follow up with him on uh, his thoughts on future legalization and stuff, and um, and certainly want to not take away from the breeders that got us here, the people that know the land races and the history of cannabis. And I think one of our stories that I'm going to cover today, which is Leafly, um, that that put it out, um, talks about the Shoppers Drug Mart push for medical which of course we predicted on this show for years now we've been predicting that uh, shoppers drug mart is going to move in and that that's a, a concern in a big concern of ours and um, remains very much so a concern so 
we'll have to see, show you what they uh, what they pulled up and uh, and go from there and then get into again seed germination. Um, the, the reason I wanted to talk about it is because a lot of people are wanting to order seeds and get seeds started. And um, though it's late in the season, it's never too late if you're growing indoors. So um, it is what it is. Um, when you're growing indoors, it, it changes things. Um, you know, you, you don't have you out. You are you are Mother Nature, so you're actually able to take care of the seeds a lot easier and bring them to uh, to proper growth. Much of course, much better. Um, at the same time, things can get screwed up um, if you're not careful. Oh shit! Where the hell is my logos and stuff? Um, clearly, uh, clearly an off day. I went from being upbeat just before the show, clearly listening to music, to just no. It's like a fucking goddamn, you know, depression fucking pill. Um, that or else I'm just dabbed out, one or the other. Um, the one thing is that the video I'm going to be putting on today. Hi Tom, and hi Martin, and to everybody that is joining on on YouTube. Um. That's probably where this is. I don't know. This time of night, it's weird how how the algorithms work. But maybe YouTube's gonna do better um, at this time of the night. I don't know. Oh, well, let's see. YouTube's eh, it's hanging in there, it's doing a little better than we are on Facebook, anyway. But uh, well, you know, it's Sunday night, and people have to get up to go to work tomorrow. And uh, you know, I picked five o'clock for a reason. Um, trying to target both British Columbia and Central Plains, and our friends in Ontario, of course. Uh, I know we we often miss Nova Scotia because it gets a little bit later, but we try. We try to get as many people as possible. What are you dabbing on, Jason? Good to have you in the chat, Jason Steele. Um, please share this around, friends. Uh, I haven't even had a chance to share it around. I shouldn't really be wearing glasses, but honestly, this light is just that bright today. And I think I've just smoked enough cannabis today that... Um, what can I say? When you have really good dabs, this is what happens. And um, seed-wise, now I did um, put together, a, a, I, I came prepared. <laughs> and we're going to get into this. So if you're looking for, you know, are we going to actually cover seeds? We are. And if you want to know what ones these are, these are were gifted to me. I'm just trying to get the name to show, you, show up without the light there. They're MM7. They say they're feminized. No, I've yet to test that, but I can tell you we have germinated them because they're, two of them are right here, and those are windowsill, again, windowsill germinated. Um, I don't know how my audio is coming through, so I'm hoping that it's coming through okay. Um, it was one thing that I wanted to test on the show, but unfortunately my ear my earbuds kind of went down on me. So, um, you know, we're trying to dial this stuff in, but most importantly is that you can know that every week we're going to have a show here on Cannabis in Canada. Um, pardon? Don't uh, um, yeah, anyway, um, <laughs> Kapat, so Plunga Goose, I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, watching on YouTube, well, oh, that's good. Same, same thing to me, audio is good, everybody's saying the same thing. Well, this is, this is the question is because I've been having problems. When I he listen to it back, I hear a lower quality than when we used to use our professional mics. And that's the reason I'm asking these questions. So there is, there is a reason behind my madness. I don't just sit here and, and ask you guys to tell me shit for no reason. Um, you know, it allows us to optimize the show uh, without having too many, too many problems that we don't really want. Um, Ten o'clock. They can using ten o'clock. I don't know whether well people can always rewatch this. When what's good is YouTube's finally listened. I talked a lot about this. I was like, YouTube, if they if they would just keep the chat, not delete it the next day, then I would keep streaming to YouTube. And we stopped doing our live feeds because we were doing giveaways. We were doing all kinds of stuff, and we couldn't go back and verify for sure 110 percent who that winner was you can't go back and delete comments in the record and stuff on facebook now you can't do it on youtube either so it gives us a, a much better flexibility but um this the show that i want to play youtube recently ripped down a bunch of my videos and oddly enough um all but the one i'm about to show you 
um, is one of the ones that didn't go back up and it, it is about seed germination it is a bit long um, it shows multiple methodologies and I'd like to discuss I'd like to get into the discussion after that um, only because um, the discussion really lights up at that juncture um, you need to see see it to believe it and understand it better I can sit here and try to explain it to you but I'm not really doing a good demo if I'm not actually planting seeds I'm just showing you guys you know thousands of seeds that have already been planted and they turn into things like this and if you're a good grower you kind of know what that is but to talk about the greenhouse methodology and how important it is about keeping the same moisture the same uh, air to water moisture or, or air to water ratio just like when you with your clones in your peat pellets you want the right air to water ratio for optimization of your rooting system it's the same thing people say oh you can't overwater a plant it stresses the plant out and young seeds you know especially they have very little strength they only have much a little enough strength to push up about two to four you know centimeters tops they don't have any more strength than that so you go and you water log them oh how where are they going to grow you know it's very hard for them because it, again it becomes a, a mud situation and i've talked about this before and people say you can't overwater a plant and i say yes you can you know and it's the same reason that um that every watering system every hydroponic system has air stones and they oxygenate the water because if the water is stale and just sits there it drowns the roots versus oxidizes the roots gives them oxygen and gives them water at the same time so you need to really understand that the, the the way the plant takes this stuff up um storing your seeds is important um this is a good example now this is a, a good way if you got a lot of uh, they, these are designed for outdoor they've been feminized so that you get no males and you don't have to worry about them i was late this year in getting out to get planting done um my own excuses um but either way you can see that there was one of some you would find just like with a new pair of shoes or anything else you want to keep fresh and you want to keep moisture out so you want to make sure no moisture gets in these seeds because even a few drops of moisture can start a fungus uh issue and you just don't want that kind of stuff happening um this is fundamental to understanding uh understanding how to store your seeds now normally you would want them in a light proof container not one where the light can get through to it this is not exactly the best example, but for me, I store my seeds in a dark, you know, closet or cupboard, basically. So it doesn't make a difference. It's basically a light proof cupboard. So as long as it's light proof and you're not getting it, um, apparently it allows the seeds to last longer. And a lot of people used to use the old film containers and the old cameras, the black uh, Fuji containers or whatever they were, um, the little roll things and people would store their seeds in that and unfortunately it's they're getting harder and harder to find but novelty stores they all seem to have these things available and uh and available for use so i think that's something um uh, we should all be looking into uh with respect to storing our seeds um these uh two plants in front of me i know people have asked on other shows uh may as well get it out of the way one's alaskan thunderfuck which is this one here um girthy strong clearly uh indica dominant by his big broad um uh, leaves again you want to talk about phenotypes uh, you, the sister plant sitting beside it um as i move this stuff over the sister plant sitting beside it uh, has the exact opposite it, it has more of a hybrid um uh, phenotype existence so you you can clearly see the difference in the leaves anyway if i just pull them apart a bit um and that one one plant well they're both about the same age they were both put down they're both raised um they're both the exact same age basically um they're both first generation mothers um so it is what it is it just goes to show you the difference between a stronger indica if you're looking at how to tell is my plant indica is it sativa is it a hybrid you know this is the only way these days we can tell and even that's not a pure well I don't know about that because that was given to me by a special breeder and he doesn't usually let go of his genetics so um you know if it is the original alaskan thunderfuck then then it wouldn't have been messed with because the, a lot of the seeds didn't even pop for that particular strain it was hard to pop and it was finicky to grow actually um this mother's being a lot more nice to me so i'm saying that in peace 
Um, you don't want to fight with your plants, but you also have to, uh, what I'm showing you is that it doesn't matter whether you're growing a hybrid, a sativa, um, a, a CBD dominant strain or a regular strain. It all starts the same from the seed. Uh, what happens in the root determines the fruit. So your seed has to matter. Your seed uh, all the time, it doesn't matter. It, has to, it starts with the genetics. So if you take care of that seed from the minute you plant it, to the minute that it's flowered, you're going to get the best return. If you feed it the best food, and if you give it the best air, if you induce CO2, and you know, and and again, it's just like rerouting its floral hormones. Vicky was probably looking at me, wondering what the hell I was doing, chopping the bottom branches off plants the other day. Um, the chopping the bottom branches off so that I reroute the floral hormones up to the top branches where I, the biggest buds are going to be, and the most light's going to hit the buds. Uh, we know the terminal buds produce the most uh, trichomes, so we certainly want to focus on those terminal buds. And especially if you're looking at a bud structured room, uh, it depends on look on what you're looking to grow. Versus these, which have just been able to grow naturally, all natural, only cut once. Um, they were topped one time when they were younger um, for height restriction, um, knowing that they were going to be used for mothers. But clearly, either one could be cloned for 50 to 100 clones. Um, and, and still just you know revenge so that's just an example but it again it starts with the seed and um, again we have to remember again I mentioned that two to four centimeter distance if you plant any deeper take these seeds doesn't matter put them any deeper the smaller the seed the more sativa this is sorry I'm jumping around on you but the smaller the seed the more sativa dominant the fatter the seed the more indica dominant you just got to remember these fundamental rules if somebody gives you seeds and you're not sure, one, I would never plant seeds that I'm not sure of unless I trust that it's from a, a grower that knows what they're doing or that has been around the industry and, and understands, you know, um, I don't want just something that, that accidentally got pollinated in out, outdoors last year's crop. Um, that is the worst possible scenario because if that happens, well, then we got a pollinated, uh, this would just be a bunch of hermaphrodite seeds and they're basically useless. And if I use them for, for back crossing or for trying to breeding of any sort, um, I'm going to just breed hermaphrodism into the next generation, the next line. <clears throat> it's, that, it's for that reason that I say protecting the plant from root to fruit is so important. Now, some people won't understand what I'm talking about. The paper towel method, I endorse it. You'll see that it's successful in this video. You'll also see that the, the greenhouse methodology is equally as successful. Um, and moreover, less stress on the actual tap root when it first when it first pops out. When that tap root pops out of the seed and starts wanting to drive down, you know, and and, and it's trying to drive its way up. You know, it, you got the tap root going straight down. When that first happens, it really needs to have the right situation going on. Um, it's very true. Um, good hashtags. Um, but it's true. Um, skinny R, R sativa and, and fat will be indica. That's just the easiest way to look at it when you when you look at what, hey, what 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 might my flowering time be? Well, if you're looking at, you know, I don't want a 90 day flowering strain or a 70 day flowering strain. I want a 60 day flowering strain or a 55 day. Well, then you better look to more towards an indica. Something like this is going to be much shorter in, in its flowering time. Indicas are always short. Sativas, the more dominant the sativa is, the longer the flowering time. And uh, we see that with our tie sticks, etc. But back to the germination. Um, when you do germinate, I'm going to put this video on first. You guys go ahead, take any notes, get ready to fire your questions, and get ready to open up debate. Because I love to have debate or discussion on the show, especially amongst growers when it comes to seeds. Because there's a lot of people out there that are watching that don't know. So they're looking for you guys to and you ladies to to step up and say this is how I do my seeds. And remember, there's no right or wrong answer. There's just a, a way that works for you, you know. And all we do is share information, and um, that you know, that's the most important thing when you take anything away from our show. Anyway, um, that I ask you to try to take away is that there is no right or wrong answer. There's only learning. And we learn together, and learning together is one of the most powerful things. And this isn't just playing videos. This is a this is a focused show. So this 
particular video was just ripped off of YouTube and I'm not sure why it's why I'm putting it back up on YouTube I'm just gonna re-edit it and put it back together um, why they ripped it down after it had 375,000 hits I don't know I don't know if it's because they don't want people growing now that we're globally legalizing and I've talked about this on the show now that we're globally legalizing are they actually trying to stomp out seeds are they trying to stomp out people teaching how to do seeds I don't know was this that did I have something in that video that just didn't meet uh, the snuff of YouTube I still don't know I don't know the answers to any of this all I know is that the the videos got ripped down and I'm not sure for what reason and even today the, the my my video count I believe went back up to 750 or something it was at 780 so I guess they ripped down 50 videos checked them and and uh, and then I guess put back up a bunch of them and I don't know how it worked anyway it's my nightmare not yours here is germinating seeds that they the, again YouTube ripped down here it is again going back up on YouTube and back over to Facebook and one thing you can't do is keep a good man down there we're gonna find a way to get the information out uh, we want to stay in good standing with YouTube and in good standing with everybody at the same time we're not gonna back down on getting out relative legal information now that we've legally uh, uh, made it permissible to grow seeds buy seeds and grow four plants so there's no reason I shouldn't be allowed to teach people how to properly germinate them so they don't fail there's the one thing that deters growers is failure if you fail in your first crop you likely are not going to try a second one it's like trying a bike if you fall over and really crash you're not going to get back on the bike you're, you know, you're, unless you got a dad that's there kicking you in the ass like I did saying, get the fuck back on the bike. Don't be a little bitch. You know, like if you got someone like that there to mentor you, different story. But normally, you know, you're going to you're going to probably run from that. But anyway, you guys, I hope you're having a good night and get your dabbers out. Get ready. I'm going to get a few more dabs into me. Um, this is a little bit of a longer video. And, and I get that, but remember, it's not just a playback video. That's what the uh, the most important thing, again, it's not just a regular playback video. I'm not just trying to waste your guys' time. Um, please pay attention to what I'm saying in the video because um, it does set forth justification for why not to use the paper towel ver uh, method versus using another method that would be less stressful on the seed itself. Um, and also, uh, I, I would even say more successful overall in germination rates. You know, whether that's 98, 99%, um, that's, that, that's a good rate. 100% usually is to, is to go. A lot of it comes down to the seeds as well. But methodology, it means everything. So let's get into the methodology. Take your notes. Get your, note, get your grow shit going. And um, I am in the chat. I am watching. And uh, let's just have a good show here and, and, uh, and talk about cannabis genetics. And we'll also be getting into the LP garbage and some of the posts that have been made about this and, and, and Shoppers Drug Mart bid to, to move into Canada and take over the medical scene. This matters to me only because it's Galen Weston and very, very rich and powerful person. Um, and Shoppers Drug Mart is a powerful entity in and of itself. So if they're trying to down take over medical, it makes me worry about the future of medical permits and the ability for us to, to provide ourselves with our own medical cannabis, um, regardless of standing law and regardless of constitutional law. Um, you know, the federal government has funny ways of, of constantly making us have to take them back to court. And unfortunately, they bought Kurt Tussaud and John Conroy's retiring. So it leaves us with very few options. So I hope you guys listen up, put your seeds down, learn from this video. If you don't know how to grow, if you don't know how to germinate seeds, if this video doesn't work for you, then nothing's going to work. Uh, it really simplifies A, B, or C. You can do paper towel method or you can do this method. You always soak your seeds at least you know, 12 hours. Um, I don't suggest 24 hours just in case um, you don't want it to crack open and actually drown. Like I said, you can stress them out with water damage. But anyway, here's a video. We'll talk about it when we get back. And uh, and it probably will only be a one hour show tonight. So again, we're trying to keep on par with that Sunday night uh, plan. We'll see you in a bit.
Welcome back to another edition of Cannabis of Canada with Jason Wilcox coming to you from British Columbia, Canada. Uh, man, it's been 17 months of fighting the government and, uh, and working really literally on impact statements and uh, now present statements for cross appeal and it's taken away from my time to be actually back in the garden. So uh, some of the things that come with going back to the garden, which I'm now doing, is uh, being able to first deal with your genetics and the stability of your genetics. So it's very important to understand that when you have a seed set, in my case, they're soaking in here, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, you get your seed set, you wanna know what to do with it. Now in this case, I already have some planted in here. Um, I pre-soaked the water, um, and for the purpose of video, I've got six seeds here um, to run through. I'm gonna run four in here, and I'm gonna run a couple in there, um, because I really don't like the paper towel method, and I'm gonna show why. Um, so. Uh, basically, with this method, the, the thing I want to get into here when we're talking about genetics is that what happens in the root determines the fruit, no matter how you cut it, okay? And what happens from day one, from how well your seed, whether it, even when it has to fight its way up through the soil, if that soil top is dry and it's not easy to fight its way up through, that could potentially uh, cause stress to the plant and either cause failure for it to germinate or cause it to become retarded and hermaphrodite on you. So there, there's small things. I mean, there's no super science. I mean, for years we farmed and people just throw the seeds in the, in the, in the ground, knock some dirt over them and they come up. And that's a fact. You know, they're, they're, and then there's another way to approach it, which is a contour approach to keeping stable genetics. The way, the way that you get them is the way that you raise them. And of course, they're predisposed. How much cannabinoids they're gonna produce, um, everything's predisposed. All their phenotypes, the way that they're gonna grow, how tall, um, how much they're gonna produce, all that's predisposed in the seed. But it's your job to keep those traits strong and when need be, potentially farm them to, to, to strengthen them further. So I'm going to put my medication out here and start talking a bit about this. So these have all been pre-soaked, as I said. Now there's been seeds already planted into here. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the first part on film, so I wasn't really thinking about filming it. And uh, what I'm doing here is you'll see that I have seeds soaking in here. And this is something that I'll bring up and I'll just ask my camera person to zoom in on there. You'll see that seeds soak. Now some people will say soak them for 24 hours. Some people will say soak them for you know, a couple hours. Some people will say soak them for 12 hours. Some people will say don't soak them at all that you'll drown them. So on that note, um, when we look at whether it's, uh, whether it's been drowned, um, Yes, you can drown your seeds. So me, I personally, I soak them until I look for when they start to sink to the bottom. Like in this case, we got like one sunk to the bottom, that's it. And the cask, um, what's called the cask or what's known for, for layman's terms, the seed shell um, or the cask, it's, it, it absorbs the water and that's what actually triggers the propagation of the plant or for it to actually start to explode. And uh, that water going in equally into the cask instead of just a little bit sucked in here a little bit sucked in there you know we like to draw it in evenly which is why pre-soaking in my own opinion is optimal we've already pre-soaked some and planted a couple in here now this is the purpose of, of research is uh and also for for video proof is that these are just going to be raised old farmer school fully soaked ready to go plant seeds leave them alone they're done so we're not going to worry about those now the ones that are soaking in here are gonna to need to come up to the top so we can actually plant them and get into these other methods. Now, to me, there's only two methods people talk about. Paper towel method, which we're gonna get into, and this method, which is I call greenhouse. I've taught this now for six years on my channel. Um, greenhouse method, make sure your ink is stick, sticking out, and just make a little hole where you plan to put your seeds in. Now, the hole should be no deep deeper than um, you put the seed sideways, you look at the width, it should be no de deeper than twice that. So basically the seed's just under the soil, but enough to keep it dark and uh, moist. And, and that's where uh, the moisture content is very important. Now by popping the seeds up here, I can just grab them. And because none have opened, now be warned that when you use water, the way that I've just shown you, and you soak them, if you're not paying attention and you let 24 hours pass, uh, that very well may be a uh, uh, damaging thing for you because what will happen is over those 24 hours, um, 
you could get rot. And what happens is they crack open and the tap root comes out. And in some cases, I've seen them grow really big in water, you know, and what we were testing around on purpose, and they can get away with that. I've seen guys take them and transplant them and they still work. I say it causes a lot of stress, again, on those original genetics. Seeds hold a lot of power. Those big plants we see later, those big yields, they start from these seeds right here. And that's an important thing to, uh, to focus on. So with that part being done, I'd like to now focus mainly here. Um, so paper towel method, traditionally, and again, use a fungicide or something. Now, hydrogen peroxide, simple, over-the-counter, you can use that to put on here to help sterilize things. Now, because none of these seeds are cracked open, I'm not worried about touching them. Now, the reason I don't like this paper towel method is we're going to actually get into this. Um, this is important. It's part of the reason I'm doing this video because people keep asking me this question, and uh, I haven't really been able to get back to anybody, but I plan to. Check out CannabisCanada.ca if you want to learn more. Um, because we're definitely going to be coming back with a, a lot of new videos and they're going to come touch on things like this that a lot of people don't seem to want to talk about. If I wasn't so busy with stuff like this with the coalition and needing to raise funds with medtainers and custom glass and everything else to try and fight the federal government for a quarter million dollars so that we can keep doing this, um, I'd have more time to actually play around with teaching. That being said, method one, straight planting. We've got the paper towel method. Now, ultimately, I'm going to bring this up and just let my camera person zoom in on it. And you can see none of, this, none of the seeds are cracked. None of, the, none of the casts have opened. So, of course, you don't see a radical or, or what some would say is a top root sticking out. So, anyway, we move on now to the greenhouse method. Now... Those that want to check out YouTube and look at my older videos on Greenhouse, they got a lot of hits because people had never seen it really done or talked about at least six years ago when, well, seven years ago we started on YouTube. Um, people had never uh, ever heard of such methods, um, such as this as sweating it out. And really, it's, it's not just about sweating. It's more about even moisture content staying in the seed um, at all times during the germination process. And again, that's about stability of the genetics. And, uh, and that's basically the DNA. You can say like you got one set of genotype and that has a set of genetics, which is a bunch of uh, uh, basically DNA of the plant. And that can be destabilized. And often, to be quite honest, hybrids, you can expect destabilized. You can expect them, these ones here to come up looking different. That's something to, uh, to stay focused on as well when you're when you're raising your seeds and you're wondering why they look different, I suggest getting a breeder's book and starting to read up on, on phenotypes and, uh, and genotypes and, and uh, how to stabilize that, you know, F1, F2, F3, etc. for generations. Um, now, with this, now, I, I talked about the importance of understanding the greenhouse method because paper towel, either way, soak your seeds for at least 12 hours in distilled water, okay, or regular drinking water. And uh, also put a little bit of peroxide in there, very uh, small dilution of maybe 10%, and that will help to sterilize the seeds and make sure that there's no fungus attack. You can also buy stuff at the, at the hydro store that will help you in that respect. But simple peroxide usually is enough. And, um, and uh, again, make sure that your medium that you're using, in this case, we've got a cocoa, um, a cocoa perlite, um, basically ProMix a cocoa pro mix mix that's, uh, that's more royal gold cocoa, best cocoa in the, in the world that I'm using, um, is something really easy to work with and uh, works great for, for germination. So that's kind of what we're using in our base. And what's important, no matter what base you're using or what medium you're using, is that it, it's able to run the water through nice and evenly and that there's not going to be trapped moisture that could potentially cause your seed to rot out before it even has a chance to grow and, and sprout. So those are important things to look at. Now, in this method, when we're talking about paper towel, again, keeping the paper towel completely wet. Wet and warm, two things. Wet and warm and out of the dark, or out of the light. Wet, warm, and out of the light. Now, these are wet because they all came from the same cup. All three came from this cup of water. So they're all wet. So they're wet. In this method, they're already moist, and they're going to stay moist because they're sweating. 
which means that no water can escape. Now, wet and moist, we've got locked up in here, which is going to allow them to, again, that greenhouse effect and even water distribution. So that means that it's going to be able to make sure that there's even amounts of water as that seed comes up through the top. Now, you've got to think of it like the seed's breaking through the soil. Now, if this is crispy and dry, or if it's harder, the seed just might not have enough strength to poke through, or it has to fight harder. You know, and that's what's going to happen in this scenario, is where the top layer, because it is warmer, it's summertime, it's likely going to dry out the top layer, and in which cases usually you would just take your spray gun and give a couple of sprays on the top. Um, again, more handwork, that's unnecessary. Greenhouse method, it's already recycling the water. You'll notice after the first couple hours, you'll start to get your regular condensation that builds up onto the plastic. And the main thing that you need to watch for is that as soon as your, your tap root goes down and your, 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 your initial um, uh, sprout comes up, you want to make sure that you get the plastic off and then allow it to grow naturally under your, whatever lights it is that you're going to use. You certainly don't need to put them under 1,000 watt head lights. You want to use something a little lower in spectrum. We will get into that. And another, on that note with light and spectrum, right now these seeds, as we've been doing this video, have been exposed to light. Now, because the radical or the taproot, if you have it, hasn't been cracked open and you, it hasn't been exposed to the light, it's not really a factor. Um, you know, you shouldn't really store seeds in the light to begin with. So it's light at any time is not really good on the seeds. Most importantly is that with this method, when these crack open, this is exactly what I do. When these crack open, I have to go like this and then I have to carefully grab each one and transplant them so that they continue to grow and you transplant them with the radical or the tap root pointing down and you would plant that in there which we will do when these crack and during that process of opening this up and then having to grab that seed the time it takes to transplant it time it takes to get the next one these seeds are exposed to light that light is stress it can cause a lot of problems to very expensive genetics or genetics that you found very hard to get. In some cases, we seek the world for the best genetics. We're in British Columbia, we have the best genetics. But protecting them, learning how to grow them, and learning how to farm them is a whole nother ball game. So it starts with learning how to germinate them and germinating them in the most safe way possible. Again, we take away the light because these ones, they're already underground and light doesn't penetrate through the dirt. So these are underground. Because of the plastic, they're kept even moisture. They're not going to dry out on top like these ones. And unlike the paper towel method, these ones will likely already be sprouted by the time I'm even transplanting these, these ones in to get done. So when you're looking for efficiency, optimal, and again, you'll see that consistency of, uh, of the methodology being used here is, is what you're looking for in any seed germination. So by giving you all three perspectives, and we'll see how the seedlings come up, because they're all from the same seed set, they're all the same genetics. Let's see how they come up. Let's see what their male to female ratios are. Let's start studying some of their phenotypes and let's bring to you what we all should be studying as farmers because different strains for different pains. And if we can farm one today, you know, by doing everything right from point A to point C, um, then you can farm a new strain that potentially could help me medically or somebody else. And that's very important. So uh, we'll see you in part two where we actually get on to the, uh, or, or in the next part, where we get into the um, sprouts coming up and of course the transplanting of these and seeing the delay in the different times. And once again, always remember stress is not good and what happens in the root determines the fruit. So this is Jason Wilcox and we'll see you in the next part. Cheers. Again, this is to save our right to cultivate, to do what I'm doing here today, to be able to do this without fear of persecution from, you know, police, bylaws, or otherwise, you know, you should have a constitutional right to plant some seeds that God's given us and grow them, you know, and there shouldn't be any federal oversight for a plant that's clearly safe and harmless um, until they show some sort of toxicity or some sort of harm in it. I'm not gonna go into a rant. On that note, we'll bring back to you in the closing part when the plants are up and going and at what stages and uh, maybe close it out at that. This is Seed Germination 101. We'll see you in the next part.
Welcome back. Okay, here we are at the final part. Now, as we've done it, it we did the, the uh, seed germination with the paper towels. Again, I don't suggest that method. We see why, and we're going to demonstrate it again here today. Well, God damn, there you go. Um, welcome back to Campus in Canada with Jason Wilcox. <clears throat> now, let's discuss some of this stuff because I, I, I seen the comments. It was good because um, a lot of the comments came out before um, the video I actually had a chance to discuss. Uh, the very comments being made, um, whether it be about the temperature that it should be in the soil, um, whether it be the moisture of the seeds, um, air to air to water, uh, uh, like again, air to water ratios, like we talk about with peat pellets, uh, very very important. This is information again that I'm sharing out of my, out of love and care, and YouTube tore down off my channel, um, not because there was any copyright or any, I done anything wrong, or I'd have some strike against me. It was torn off my channel either by a hacker, which I don't want to believe because YouTube is a big platform, but somehow, uh, some way, they managed to um, take down about 80 of my videos, and now I'm back up 54 videos. So it's very, very strange what's going on with YouTube. I don't really care. Um, all my numbers are legitimate. I haven't dialed my channel. So, um, you know, back in the day, I didn't really care about copyright, so I'm not sure if that happened. Uh, I can see where um, today's live feed did not properly save. I apologize for the misinformation. There should be nothing but a write-up on genetics, and I'm just noticing the write-up for this live feed is not the write-up that I did, which is very, very strange. But um, I apologize for that. It actually should read what Facebook's uh, write-up reads, but all I can do is uh, change it on the fly. Uh, what else can I say? But uh, keep the comments coming. I really like to, to people to weigh in. Again, my biggest thing, and again, the, in that in that video, what you learn, um, regardless of what your, you know, whether the paper towel method works 100% for you every time, every time, what you learn in that video is that there's one problem with the paper towel method, is that you're exposing the radical to light and to climate that might be too cold. Again, temperature matters. So you're shocking potentially your root, and if you stunt your your radical, you know basically your tap root and 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 piss light, you stop that, you stunt it. It may not have the strength to pop through the seeds or pop through these, these the soil. People either make the mistake of dropping it too deep, or watering with cold water, and stunting and shocking the seed. It's the exact same thing that we're talking about here now. You know, sterilizing the seeds was something I didn't really address um, because if you get your seeds from a reliable source, you should, you know, if you want to be safe, um, um, you can use peroxide with a dilution. Um, you can even use bleach with a, with a minor dilution. Uh, all you're doing is killing any potential fungus that is on those seeds so that, it, one, it doesn't grow to other seeds, and two, it... Um, it doesn't uh it doesn't just basically kill your kill your crop but um i'm looking for um yeah i'm just looking for anybody that's got a response to what i said because it's it i'm gonna put this other stuff up here for uh my friends on youtube uh i apologize i'm not sure how that that's an old write-up and that's kind of messed up but it is what it is not much I can do except fix it on the fly. Um, definitely not doing a, a dual show of box opening. I don't know how that happened. See, I just went, came back to this channel. And it's doing the same thing to me. So, interesting. Anyway, paste that in there. And then we just got to change this title to whatever it is on Facebook. Um cannabis seeds see it's supposed to be germinating cannabis seeds which is the title of the show germinating cannabis seeds and how to grow cannabis so anyway once i get a chance to get back into these comments here if there's any comments regarding the, the video uh please throw it up there this is how our you know it puts it out to our sponsors i love there's a lot of people out there calling themselves experts and calling themselves all kinds of stuff and and, and having yet it put any any full time in to to more than than reporting on what other people have done um, and, and that's all good, but I'm looking for real grower experts to come out and start helping us with this particular um, with this particular show. That helps everybody learn to grow. 
and um, and of course it helps me correct some of my statements because again I was off fundraising for two or for four years and then I'm back here on the show now doing uh we're at 49 minutes i'm back here now on the show doing what i've always did which was talk about growing i'm just doing it in a different way i'm playing old videos it's like how people are seeing in the cannabis in canada facebook group we got 10,400 people in there uh we were starting to play old videos and it's just so people can learn the very basic fundamentals like that video presented uh very basic fundamentals of how you can germinate use paper towel method if you want use greenhouse methodology if you want there's no right or wrong answer i like i said before i started the show there's no right or wrong answer growers growers attitudes and egos go go higher than the 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 plants themselves so you know and usually the person themselves so you gotta be very careful with trying to say one methodology is better than another when some people have been using the same shit for you know years and it works for them and that's all that matters at the end of the day so um yeah i thought i'd touch on that uh i I do have some footage as well that i'm going to play from 420 we do have a couple uh media articles to look at um yeah uh most importantly it's it's about lp garbage i don't know if you guys have seen all this stuff in the news now vicky's crashed i don't know why but she's crashed out and um i don't know maybe the dabs just really nailed her but she's crashed out, and um, you know normally she'd be up in arms about that issue. So we'll also be talking about that and covering that. So um, if there's some again intelligible conversation that 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 is is meant for growing and and with respect to germinating seeds, then I love it. I mean, for instance, I didn't mention the peroxide. Um, sterilizing your seed is something that's important. You can use your standard. Um, peroxide you get at your grocery store or you can use the the 90 i think it's 99 proof or 98 proof or whatever and burn your damn fingers on i can't remember 75 proof i can't remember what it was back in the day i used to use peroxide a lot because i used to use it for oxidizing my roots i used to believe that that's what i needed until i became an organic grower and realized that i by by virtue of putting peroxide in i was killing my microbes and um i had to stop doing that so if you if you are growing organically organically then don't worry about um using pesticide or using uh, peroxide Uh, but if you are starting from seeds and you've gotten the seeds from somebody that you don't know and you're concerned then go ahead and run them like i said if they if they come with an air pack in there to keep them dry that's to keep moisture out like i said (coughs) at the beginning of the show that's the proper way to pack seeds um if you're gonna ship them around so there i've been able to change that i can't save shit all i can do is hope you guys see that there's been a change up in the write-up and um and i'll just leave it at that let me try to keep up with both chats here um well this is the thing patty you need to watch out for um like i said i could take these these babies um and take them down the street and just stick them in the garden just let them go now that they're plugs what are known as plugs they have enough there's a couple little circles around the bottom there's enough of a rooting system in the base that they're not they're not going to die unless you're a retard um the problem is they need to be planted deeper so that the second set of leaves can come through and that's that's really uh what matters uh once you get them germinated uh, germination in and of itself let's just say you get old seeds but you really want those genetics but they're from the 70s or the 60s which is what i seek that's what i look for all the time now if you get something like that there, there's a technique of scrubbing where you actually use a nail file or or a matchbox or something uh, you know to scrub the side of the seeds to to better allow the water to get into that husk so instead of using peroxide i don't know who told you to do that for 24 or for 12 hours or 24 hours uh it's not necessary uh, but at the same time um i don't know if it's it's necessarily going to hurt it um it, i don't think peroxide would be good on on the on the uh, again the radical itself so if you think about the radical just the, the com- first coming out of the seed it, it's not even formed into a taproot and separated into a piss like yeah it's it's yet to do that so it's it's really at a fragile state and it's not a state to shock it in. That's why I say people don't realize the 70 to 90 degree Fahrenheit 
and the 20 well it works out to 21 to 32 degrees celsius i always say general room temperature um, if you go outside those ranges you're going to shock and stunt the seeds and potentially if you spend a hundred dollars on 10 seeds or five seeds then you would you certainly don't want to stunt them or kill them you want to follow the best germination method out there and i just demonstrated it for you i'm telling you now the greenhouse methodology hands down um you know is it is the best i call it a greenhouse i started doing that i've been doing this show for 11 years on youtube um check my channel stats you'll see it for yourself um that's just what it is i've done uh, at least 500 600 grow videos on different ways that you can grow um so this isn't um speaking from lack of knowledge it's speaking from you know uh really studying myself and in, in hands-on experiments to, to see you know what is the outcome and uh, like in that video you could see there was a difference in the in the growth patterns um, though it, they popped pretty much all around the same time they still had different growth patterns one was growing nice and fast and even and they were all looking uniform and the other ones were looking a little bit different and that's because they they weren't growing in the same methodology like I said equal water distribution not having to, to expose them to any light once that seed goes down then there's no radical open yet the husk hasn't cracked so you can go ahead and put that down under the seed and once it's you cover it with dirt two centimeters deep you know it's about the steepest i suggest just under the soil um with the roots will go grab on their own <clears throat> all you have to do is cover it up but um if you do that that seed never has to see light again until it's ready to see light which is when it's ready to pop through the soil on its own that's why the paper towel method, once that radical is out, people are like, oh, yeah, I got this. And they walk in their grow room and they go put it in a peat pellet. And meanwhile, that high intensity discharge lamp, be it high pressure sodium or metal halide, whatever you're using, that thing's blasting down on that radical. And you just shocked and stunted your $100 seeds. So at the end of the day, you know, the smart person is a person that listens to what they're learning from the, the people that have been doing this for a very long time. And I stand by what I say because I've been doing this for 11 years. Um, I really do stand by what I, what I say. Um, and I usually demonstrate it in the videos. So hopefully you guys, you guys are able to grab onto that. But um, anyway, we also got, uh, we got some footage to show for 420 real quick here. Um, it's only about one minute of footage. I've still got a bunch that I'm working on. Um, unfortunately, my uh, editor that I had hired, um, surprisingly, uh, bailed on me. Um, yeah, it was unfortunately, he's really busy himself, but couldn't uh, couldn't do the work. So it uh, left us in a position of a bunch of footage, but um, I'm not the best editor in the world. So anyway, um, I was able to edit this footage if I can find it. Uh, BC420, there it is. Okay. So anyway, here's uh, this year's uh, 420 uh, celebrations down at English Bay. Um, you guys can take a look at the crowds, see who is there, and uh, when we get back, I'm gonna keep looking for anything that is, uh, yeah, anything that's uh, that's appropriate for this conversation. Now that I've put the write up in the in there, you guys should be able to see it. There's no way for me to update this or save this in any way. Uh, if not, check it out on Facebook, and there is a proper write-up. It's all about germinating seeds, and that's very, very important. Germinating seeds is so important right now because we're, we're legal. Only one in two provinces, Quebec and, and I believe it's Saskatchewan, can't grow. The rest of us can and though the t landlord tenancies and everybody's worried they're going to get kicked out, where people are worried about their jobs, people don't want to freaking talk about, oh, I, I'm actually a cannabis user, I get it. But at the same time, my God, learn how to plant a seed. At least put a couple in your windowsill. You got the right to grow four plants. Put four seeds in your windowsill. And I just showed you how you can do it. You know, and getting seeds is not that hard. No, some people will tell you you have to get them from licensed producers. I think that's just a monopoly. <coughs> sorry the monopoly showing showing their true colors once again um and we will get it get into this in the next um part because uh right after i show this footage here because once we get into the monopoly part that's going to be all the trash and i know that a lot of activists out there even myself I, i'm a social justice activist so when i think about garbage um and and wasteful plastic people never pre-plan this in their business model that this would become a problem. 
but you're going to have mass containers in our garbage fills and you didn't have an exit strategy so canopy growth came up with one and we're going to get into it and we're going to talk about it so um you know it is what it is but i invite people to uh to uh to join um to join in on the chat and most importantly don't be afraid to weigh in on questions we anybody with a wrench beside their name is one of our administrators or managers and they'll be able to to answer questions as well on on my behalf if i'm not on the show so we'll see you guys in about one minute and uh i don't know just short of two one minute 20 seconds actually cheers Shouts out to Cannabis in Canada. Let's get it. Happy 420 from Vancouver here at Sunset Beach. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful people, our plant, our people, our culture. We're here to celebrate. We're here to protest prohibition and to unite with people around the world to recognize that this plant can save people and the planet. So happy 420 to everyone worldwide. I hope it's a beautiful day for everyone. Alright, well there you go, BC420, right in the middle of the dab. Uh, yeah, BC420, there it is, um, down at the beach. We have a lot more footage to come, so remember to click that little bell up at the top if you're on YouTube, and I'm not sure what it is on Facebook, but um, yeah, click that thing to get reminders when we do go live, or if we do put up videos. Yeah, I'm not sure how you get messaged, but you get messaged somehow. And I know you're wondering why I'm using that shitty little bong. It's because that's the one that I like. I have some nicer glass, but it's the one that works for me. I bought seeds from two different suppliers and was disappointed both times. And this will happen. Um, 100%, Edward. Um, I, and this is why I'm doing this show. Um, and this show is focused solely on uh, uh, genetics. Though I'm sitting here dabbing and having a good time, I'm sitting here with genetics around me um, from the seeds to what they look like once they pop all right these are the same seeds to this now as a demonstration model you could take a cup you drill your holes in the bottom you have to have drainage again you want even water distribution the water has to be able to drain this will save you a lot of money you can just use beer cups um the other thing is is having an elastic band which i don't have here right now um so when again as you've seen in the video is is covering the top um and that one, once your seeds down then you cover the top and 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 you're set to go and and again that's the greenhouse methodology um same can be done um without the plastic just using the paper towel method um you can take it and plant that radical i suggest using tweezers don't pick it up with your fingers believe it or not just the oils on your fingers if you touch that radical can cause a disruption in its in its growth patterns and or kill the the seed itself depending on what's on your fingers so if you don't know what you're doing when you get into that grow room then you really shouldn't um you really should pick up either pick up a grow book or or read something or or tune into cannabis of canada where you can get this sort of information but I'm, I'm, I'm now three minutes over on tonight's show, so I'm not going to keep it going um, all night. Hey, Brandy, how you doing, girl? Um, so, um, yeah, Vicky's crashed out on the couch, and uh, I seriously probably got to get some food into me. So, um, uh, drilling flimsy cups actually is easy. Um, I've done thousands of them, trust me. Up in the hills, um, that's how we make our plugs before we take them out into the, into the mountain and put them down. 
So what I mean by plugs is is that we would allow these to grow to the point that this is completely root bound and that's a plug or you clone to plugs. Um, you take a bunch of clones and you, you allow them to get strong, hardy, root bound so that when you put them down in the dirt they have the strongest chance of survival. Um, and that's done on a standard basis for outdoor growing like these ones here It's a little late in the season to go outdoors. I don't know if they would finish. I have auto flowering seeds that will finish Because um, I know their flowering time. So it's a little bit different the ones that I actually bred for my wife So they only grow to one foot and they're oh, low yielders. God damn. It's hard to sit in these chairs after an hour um, But it is what it is um, I'm going to kill the show here. Uh, we're pretty much, I'm not seeing any questions fired up here. I'm looking at both chats and uh, and looking for, um, yeah, what's going on. And, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. It's uh, recycle, reuse, and Dixie. Oh, yeah, I forgot the LPs. Fuck, can't let them go. Um, yeah, the LP story here is going to be... Um, recycling goes national all right so we'll throw this over onto the screen and you guys will understand what i'm talking about here so we got canada cannabis waste recycling program goes national as outcry over cannabis over packaging continues tweed and u.s recycling company TerraCycle choose Earth Day to announce the nationwide expansion of their tweed and TerraCycle cannabis packaging recycling um, program. Shit, I didn't mean to click on that link. Sorry, guys. Um, program first announced only weeks after legalization. Though the program has been running in a few stores across Canada for some time, Monday's announcement launched a service across the country in addition to recycling bins in cannabis, oh, sorry, in addition to recycling bins in cannabis retailers. The expanded Tweed X TerraCycle offers free pickup of cannabis containers. Now, I don't believe this. I call bullshit. I, this is a marketing ploy. Well, they'll come pick up your, your containers and you want to stay green, so buy from Tweed. Uh, I call bullshit marketing ploy, and I don't think anything is ever free. So I don't know how they're going to pay for drivers to drive around picking up people's used containers that most people are going to need to try to hide their illegal weed. But anyway, I'll keep reading here um, from here, which will be the especially useful for both consumers. Um, why don't uh, or who don't have ready access to cannabis stores and who also also those who whose municipal recycling does not handle all types of plastic used to to package cannabis. Um, once Tweed's TerraCycle have collected between 10 to 40 tons of plastic cannabis packaging, they will melt it down plastic pellets that can be made into plastic products. My concern with this story is, is to be quite frank, um, I'm just going to flip back here for a second. Um, to be quite frank, my concern with this story is, is, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news, but there's a problem already. We just got caught, Canada, being called out on the world stage for dumping our garbage in the Philippines. So to think these big corporations who are backdooring cannabis into their, 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 their corporations wouldn't outsource it that way. I don't believe that they're all going to go to making pellets. What kind of pellets? Um, you know, and I don't believe TerraCycle is going to pick up for free or there must be some money in those in, in, in melting down and recycling. Recycling is good. That part's a, a positive direction. <clears throat> At the same time, no one in their business plan thought of this until some of the activists um, in those in those arenas stood stood up and said, this is wrong. This packaging can't go and we're not going to fill our, our landfills um, with all this crap. Uh, this is just uh, the long and the short of it. So, um, you know, and, and I know a lot of people, a, f a few years back when I first said Shoppers Drug Mart was going to come in and take over, um, didn't necessarily listen to me. Um, and that's okay. I mean, when you say something like that, it sounds kind of funny, especially because this was prior to legalization or prior to the win in Allard. Um, Galen Weston's pissed that we're allowed to grow, grow. He feels all cannabis should be on his shelves. Um, but he's now made a 
calculated move. I've talked about this before. Nobody's serving up medical. Medical patients aren't being served right. Well, who better than Shoppers Drug Mart and their pharmacists to serve us medical patients cannabis? Um, and that's where this next story kind of takes us. And uh, I'll kind of send this over here and let you guys see for yourselves. Shoppers Drug Mart launches MED Porthole in Alberta. After rolling out its online medical cannabis portal in Ontario in January, Shoppers Drug Mart launched a second porthole in patients in Alberta on Tuesday. Rather than ordering from single cannabis producer, patients who use Shoppers Portal can choose products from 11, produ or 11 producers, including big names like Aurora and Orferia, um, as well as smaller producers like Flora and Broken Coast. The company offers a call center for patient questions and counseling, similar to what most LPs offer medical consumers. Though when the corporation announced their program last August, dispensary owners cried foul saying they knew better about cannabis than Shoppers Drug Mart. And I say that's actually true. But anyway, um, and here we are now. <coughs> in winding the program to... Sorry. In, uh, in widening the program to Alberta, Dr. Hans Clark, Director of Pain Services at the Toronto General Hospital and member of the Chains Medical Cannabis Advisory Board, shot back at the house who believe they can get better medical advice in dispensaries. I've gone in dispensaries just on my own uh, out of courtesy and I could tell I could tell you there are sometimes an 18 year old telling someone this is what you should be using for rheumatoid arthritis. Um, this is what I you should use for your anxiety. This will help you sleep he said. You know, um, this is uh, an interesting article. Um, I'm going to copy it so you guys have it in the chat. And then uh, if you're interested in reading the rest of that, it does go on a little bit longer. But uh, I don't want to waste your time with uh, reading your news articles that you can read on your own. Uh, and moreover, it, it paints a picture of what I told you, Galen Weston and Shoppers Drug Mart, it was all along. One, not only were they going to be their own LP, now what they've done, instead of being their own LP, they went and they bought into all the other LPs to sell their products through L through Shoppers, which is just smart distribution. Um, what can I say? Um, hats off to, to the guys that, that know what they're doing. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's something that again when I when I reported on it before here on Cannabis in Canada, and I said, look at these guys are doing this, and people don't don't necessarily take it serious until they read it in the newspaper, and then they're like, oh my god, what do we do? And it's like, what are we supposed to do? They've already gotten their permits. They wouldn't announce it in the newspaper until they had everything in place. I've told you guys, they're surrounding us. They're setting up infrastructure, and they're once the infrastructure is in place, they'll seek to lift that federal injunction. And when that happens, so will those pl these plant counts. They'll be gone. That's my biggest fear. Um, I know my attorneys have told me not to worry about it, but um, you know what? Not all my attorneys even work for our side anymore. Some have been bought out in their entirety, uh, working for another, uh, uh, working for these large corporations. So, do I worry a lot for Canada? Yes. Do I think four plants will be enough for for average patients? I think if we teach them how to grow them right and find them just the right strains, but the fact that they have to buy their strains from a licensed producer, um, I think that there's there's an argument for the courts. Um, I think there's an evolutionary argument. Um, I don't think that you can punish someone for a, a male plant crossing with a female plant and producing a brand new genotype that nobody else has and then asking them to throw it away without ever finding out if it works for them. It's plant genetics versus human genetics when you really wrap your head around it and you really dig into it. Uh, just like these two plants, you can tell they're completely different. One's a fucking heavy indica, one's in it, one's a, a total hybrid, you know, and uh, it's just the way they grow. And, and they're, two, they're gonna a express two different spectrums of cannabinoids or phytocannabinoids, sorry. Um, they're gonna express uh, 113 different um, levels and, and ratios of cannabinoids, uh, sorry, phytocannabinoids. And when we ingest them, or when we smoke them, like I'm about to, uh, it's at that time that we also 
um, turn around and we convert them into endocannabinoids and they feed the endogenous system through your CB1 and CB2 receptor cells in your body. Very important that we understand all this from root to fruit, from farm to flame, you know, uh, it, it's really, it, it, it's something that is always the same and we have to take that and run with it because the government failed and we won to keep growing in this country people shouldn't be afraid to put seeds down it's really not that hard to grow a plant it's only hard getting them started getting them off the ground and feeling confident in yourself and um, not following miracle grow commercials i know a lot of people use miracle grow in ontario and stuff but that stuff if you read up on the carcinogens that you're sm you're smoking you'll never use it again you shouldn't be using that if you're going to use it in a, in a plant that you're planning to eat or smoke or or whatever um, based on that alone uh, even I don't care if you're the best flusher in the world um, yeah I just I, it's my take how many y'all out there are watching it that use uh, freaking uh, for real they use miracle bro I want to know that I seen a commercial the other day I couldn't believe my own mind it's like this is a is this somebody from our culture they're actually telling us to use miracle bro I was shocked um, only because it's it's it though it though it'll be successful and it'll make your plants look pretty that's why it's called miracle grow because it's full of hormones and all kinds of other shit that you shouldn't be putting in your body that's why it's not suggested for foods they do have organic miracle grow i know you guys are going to fire back with that one and and say well you can use organic miracle grow and that that's supposed to be 100 percent safe well yeah you know it's supposed to be and you're right you could technically use it that way um these are choices uh i i, I say to everybody out there look at what you're doing with you know with your genetics and look what you're doing with your um God damn, this is strong. High voltage is in the house. A big shout out to, uh, um, again, uh, 6X sent us a cool package. We did like a pre-420 show. It came in at a good time. Um, so it, it was important to, uh, yeah, to at least uh, send out, you know, a shout out to them <coughs> and put that on and say, you know, what up, 6? So if you guys are down in the 6, um, and, then you know, that would be the 416 where I grew up in Ontario, then check these guys out in TDOT and uh, see what's up. Uh, email address is scrolling across there. Uh, they were they had some amazing flower. Now they're I've looked at their prices. Now I'm not from Ontario, so I'm from BC, and and this is the hardest part about my 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 position to be honest. And, and, and I just I say this only because I want people to understand. Like as I sit here dabbing and 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 uh, and having a good time. Uh, I want people to understand at the same time, it comes because of a lot of luck. I'm very lucky. I've had a lot of doors that have just opened up for me. Um, and I know that I'm blessed to have that. So I don't want anybody to think that I, I underestimate what I have or don't appreciate what I have or can't don't recognize how lucky I am that I have some of the things that I do. Because um, to be honest, I, I'm happy just to still be alive. Um, I was diagnosed to die uh, literally not too long ago. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where, um, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to just open this chat up. Uh, but it's one of those things that um, if you want to try and, uh, you want to try and work on, you got to punch through. There was a time when I counted Christmases, and when you count Christmases, uh, what I mean by that is it's like you're thinking each one's your last one. So you, you, you kind of, you, you treat it as if it's your last one. It's a bad headspace to be in. But I was there for many, many moons, and uh, and then I was able to come back from that and to punch out of that brick concrete wall that I felt I, w I was stuck in, and, and there's no other word for it other than brick concrete wall. Um, really, you feel like you're stuck. You feel like you can't do nothing, and, and it's really not cool. And I'm only saying this because um, this comes back to me why I'm talking about plants right now. I I already am predicting and and forecasting another unfortunate. Uh, legal battle for us patients um, for the right for us to continue to do what we do now and what we're here talking about tonight and it's all the more reason you guys need to fill out these applications download them there's nothing wrong with it download them get them out there and 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 you're you're set you know you're ready to go 
download these forms it's free it doesn't cost money and there's a lot of doctors willing to help um, these are things that matter and people need to just remember this as I as I talk about it you guys know when you smoke really good weed and you sneeze I swear to God it's not allergies and it's not definitely not my plants but um oh I had rubber ass from sitting here. I was going into the second hour only because it's a Sunday night virgin show. So, you know, we got enough of y'all on there. Know that you'll find us here every Sunday night, 5 p.m. sharp, um, Pacific uh, Pacific Daylight uh, Savings Time. So uh, that's a very important thing. If you're interested, hit that bell, get your reminders, and sign up with Cannabis Canada Incorporated.com. Uh, Cannabis Canada Inc.com. Sorry. It's not fully, in, uh, uh, it, it doesn't say fully incorporated, so um, it is what it is. I'm just uh, flipping these things back around one more time. Oh, man, it's just been one of those nights where it's like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do next. But uh, I see we always got some uh, some curiosity. All you know, well, people, you know, that don't want to worry about some plant food that's out there not to kill them, obviously don't give a shit about their end product that they're that they're displaying to their customer or to themselves or to their family or to their wife or to their sister or to their brother. Um, if you don't care and you're willing to just give them carcinogens, well, that's on you. I actually do care and I use organics. So good on you, you know, keep up the good job. Go miracle grow. Go miracle grow. See how far that gets you with real growers. See how many real OG growers that are going to tell you to go ahead and use that shit. You know, it's just I'm keeping it real. You know, you want to get into real plant foods, don't go there because there's a lot of new growers that are watching this and they listen to dumbasses that make comments like that. And I don't know how else to say it because at first it's it's okay, but if you're going to come on my channel and start, you know, talking shit, there's a lot of chemicals in a lot of different things. There's a lot of plant nutrients that I don't suggest people use, but I don't brand bash. So I won't go after the certain brands. Uh, miracle Grow has been a long standing no no for home growers who medically grow cannabis for medical, again, medical purposes. We're already sick, we don't need to get sick. So naturally, we don't want to feed ourselves chemicals. We're going to feed ourselves organics if possible. So your comment's way out of line. You're off base and you're out in left field. And you're still looking for the ball. So you're just running around, running in circles. But you're not really able to hold weight to the conversation. you know. So when you're ready to actually have an intelligible one, maybe when you come out of timeout, you can actually fire back with something relative or relative. Um, I love engagement. I, lo I don't mind that at all. Well, you know, I'm not looking for shit, but the best weed in the world, that's like me. I look for the best weed in the world. That's why I'm always breeding strains. I'm always growing different things. I bred two new strains for Vicky this year. Uh, that's one of them. And then this one was given to me, which is Alaskan Thunderfuck, which wasn't, uh, the seeds hadn't been popped since the 80s. So we had only a few that were able, we were able to get to pop. I guess uh, at some point they, they dried out or got wet or something, but a few died, but all said at the end of the day you really only need one mum and then you can tissue tissue culture off this mum if you want or you can clone off of it of course and um and both these are mums for that purpose but it's more to show the phenos i want people when, when you know people don't get get lost in all this talk what's a phenotype what's a genotype you know what's cannabinoids what's endocannabinoids what's phytocannabinoids uh, it all comes down to what discussion are you having are you having a discussion about the phytocannabinoids in the plant or the endocannabinoids that are in your body, you know that's really all it comes down to, and uh, and then in, you know in by which way they they go through either your CB1 or CB2 receptor cell. Me, I know the plant from root to fruit, but I also understand its cannabinoid profile as best as research. I still got a lot of research to do myself. It's ongoing research. Anybody that says that they know everything about the plant and that they know what the right, right dose is are lying. Nobody knows what the right dose is. That's why doctors in Canada don't prescribe. 
Ask your doctor, are you prescribing this to me or are you just authorizing? They'll tell you, I'm only authorizing you. I can't prescribe something that's not in my books. The doctors don't want to do it. At least they changed it from marijuana to cannabis after Allard. Put them on trial, kicked their ass, but they called, stopped calling it marijuana, spelling it with an H, which we knew, all knew was slang. But that's because you can't really do anything about it. You can't really force them to study it. And Harper pulled all funding into research into cannabis. So we couldn't really get any good research grants to really prove the medical value that we knew the plant held. Um, the Chinese weren't wrong. Nobody was wrong. For, the, for a millennia, this plant's been farmed. That's why people say, well, what strain do you think is the best strain? And it's like people don't realize, unless you're a grower, that the, a strain grown in one environment in one location might act out completely differently and produce completely different results growing in a different environment. So that's another factor that you have to weigh in. Then there's the plant genetics versus the other person's genetics versus your genetics. A plant might work for your genetics because your plant genetics or your, your genetics works with the plant. But for the other person, it doesn't work as good. That's why some strange you smoke and you're just like, oh my God, that's the shit. And it's because it's growing right, likely, but it just hits you right. And then you're like, man, I found it. And you know that, and as a master grower, and I, I again, doing this for 20 years, I, that you don't get to that point until you breed your own plants. When you breed your own plants, you can name them. And when you get to that point and just kind of do it at will, then you're able to say, okay, now I'm, I'm okay with this, but how do I keep sharing it with the world? 700 videos later, or 750 videos later, here I am still saying, let's teach the world. Let's make sure we all teach each other. Let's make sure we all leave here knowing how to take it from here, you know, to here, like we did in the video, no different, and we turn them into this, and these take care of thousands of people. And that's what matters. And what also matters is that nobody else, again, nobody in the world, other people may have Alaskan Thunderfuck, but they don't have this particular phenotype with this particular geno. Uh, again, it, it's, it's actual when we're talking about the molecular level, the, the genetic level of the plant. Nobody else has the exact same as these two because both of them I grew from seed. And I know that. Until they start putting enzymes in these plants and in the genetic profiles so that the, they get bred into the next plant. Once they start doing that, then we're screwed. That's why they're trademarking these strains so that they can put enzymes in them and they can make them so they're traceable. And uh, we all need to be prepared for that because that's a Monsanto type move. And nobody wants Monsanto coming up, taking up our genetics. The, all the old licensed producers have already bought the genetics from us. Now they're trying to say you have to buy them back from us if you want to grow. And it's like, no, you shouldn't have to buy from a licensed producer. You should be able to order your seeds from Spain. What is legalized if you can't order your even, even your seeds to grow the four plants you're legally allowed to grow? Put that into perspective. Furthermore, you're all medical. I don't care what you say. It's like taking a multivitamin based on the information I just gave you. So this becomes another argument that I always touch on. I touch on in every show because I don't think enough people really listen to it. I can't believe my coffee is actually holding this long. Yeah, no, a few people have got to create their own. And, and sometimes by accident, you know, either a male might get away on you on a seed set or, you know, um, there's different things that happen. Even outdoor, I've seen accidents happen where uh, two, two outdoor patches were too close to each other and the one guy didn't know what he was doing and one of his males pollinated the other field because of the way the wind blew. And uh, what can you do? Um, you ended up with a seeded crop, but at the same time, you ended up with a brand new set of genetics that may have been good, may have been bad. Was it was it Hermie genetics? We don't know. This is why we lost all our land races. You know, we still can say Alaskan Thunderfuck because we can actually trace back its lineage because growers were still tracing it. It's all these guys that started just taking, like for instance, Alaskan Thunderfuck and calling it, well, it's Luke Skywalker today. You know, well, when you start just throwing names on strains that you never bred, you don't have the right to do that. You really don't. And you're shitting all over the actual culture and the breeders that actually did breed the, breed the plant. So again, when we're talking about education and, and being knowledgeable or knowing what it is that you're talking about, um, 
it's great when you're able to smoke weed. It's a whole nother thing when you're able to grow it from root to fruit, talk about it from medical implementation, and also talk about it from just being a stoner and doing big fat fucking dabs like I'm about to do. So um, based on the stoner feedback, like I said, the diamonds, the blue diamond, or the, what is this, blue dream diamonds, these ones are really kick-ass, and I still like, now this one has the most terpenes, yeah, strongest terpenes. You'd think it almost was sprayed with perfume, except it wasn't. It's just it, they trapped them that well. And, be, and because I've done this now, um, I understand how how the procedure is done. So it's a whole different thing, understanding how to make diamonds. Um, I haven't quite got the live resin part as good as I could. But I have some friends helping me. I'm learning. I'm catching up. That's what happens when you take four years off. So what can you do? You know? And always remember, if you're doing YouTube live videos and you're a medical patient, make sure that you remind YouTube or Facebook that you're using a medical device, not a bong or, or whatever they might want to suggest. Um, that's something that's very important as well, um, as you've seen over with me over the years. Really low temp. So you're actually able to get like three pulls, but the turp taste is just like, damn. It just sits you back in your ass, you know. Almost wish I had a CBD pill, but I'm still waiting on, on a, yeah, it's, it's Sunday, you know. I got to meet up with my bro tomorrow and lock down some CBD and lock down some, some other stuff. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing that makes me panic is if I can't get Vicky the right CBD or the, I worry about getting her the wrong stuff. There's certain labs that, you know, they may have been working with us before, but now after legalization and, and with the new, they read the new laws and they speak to their lawyers and they start backing away from wanting to deal with um, the same people. So over time, naturally, they're winning and we're losing. Not sure about dabs yet, haven't tried it, oh my God. Well, then you, you, you've missed, you missed heaven, dear. Honestly, um, or sorry, you, yeah, it was a Heather, right? Yeah. I was gonna say you you missed heaven, dear. Honestly, you that's you're moving a whole nother level up. Uh, my wife's name is Vicky Dabs for a reason. Um, I met her on the Extract Express, which was all about dabbing. I mean, there was people smoking weed as well, but uh, really it was about dabbing. Um, and, and Beard Brothers dabs at the time, and um, big slabs of dabs, and and not necessarily stuff as potent as this. We didn't have ovens and all that stuff. See, this is still smoking. That's how low this is burning at. <coughs> and you guys can see how much I've been pulling on it. <coughs> Sorry if that hurt you guys' speakers. I've been working on trying to get the right numbers going here and getting this shit rolling right. Hey, Mike Gooch, what's up, brother? I'm looking forward to seeing you this year. I might be driving down with Daniel the Mano again. Um, I'm just trying to make that final call and that final decision. And if we do make that trip across the country, if you guys need seeds, let us know. We won't have clones in the car, but we'll have lots of seeds. And uh, we'll make them available. And we will be stopping in various cities as usual, um, as we did last time. So something to keep in mind. But uh, hopefully you've been keeping well, Mike. And hopefully you and the baby, um, you know, and you're finding fatherhood um, as fun as ever. So... And to all my all my friends and supporters out there, thank you for coming on and supporting Cannabis in Canada as we continue to grow out the show. Now with the Sunday show, this is the first one. Um, you'll see me change the name to version one or show one, whatever, um, starting for 2019. And this is this is really just a, the, the start of a, a slow comeback and, um, and really just uh, trying to rebuild an audience and rebuild um, a fortress. <clears throat> that we once had which was the the grower the growers fortress um you know we we had this in our mm -hmm. in our possession in the context that we didn't have to worry about uh americans or anybody else coming in and buying or trying to control the narrative of the cannabis culture and when you have people buying 420 or controlling who says what on the stage they're controlling the narrative and in year one that's fine because our own people were speaking <clears throat> but in year two, you know, it might just be licensed producers speaking at a, at a, at a protest. And that is really fucked up. So I, I don't know how things are going to play out, man. I'm just, I'm still dazed and confused over a few things, but it is what it is. Um, 
Yeah. No, when we get into the second hour, guys, please, and ladies, please do refresh your browsers. Um, that will allow you to uh, watch the second half of the show without uh, without any problem. Um, the only reason I don't have to, I'm just, again, is lucky enough to have that right computer. Um, what else was I going to look at here? I had, um, so there was another um, article. Um no. Those dams, dabs are strong. High voltage in the house. I remember, shout out to the six and Beard Brothers Concentrate. Of course, Green Planet Nutrients and Pacific Northwest Garden Supply, Geopods, which are out here on the table. And um, yeah, Resin Seeds, which helped me to create some of these. So, lots of shout outs here. Um, I always remember the people that help get us here. This is for sure. Um, Huh. I'll show rank number one. Interesting. Now, this is some straight bullshit. Just so you guys know, this is going to trademark. And um, there's not much I can do about it right now. <clears throat> but this is Health Canada's page. Um, and yes, that's my company name, Cannabis in Canada, that I've used since 2009, legally and officially. And my lawyers are... Um, in a trademark dispute with them right now over this very name and this very um, this very um, brutal move. I mean, they just hit me with a $35,000 HST bill that they then abolished and said, sorry, the account never should have been opened. And I reminded them that I never opened it. So it was it was very interesting, um, and I was warned that they might they might do stuff like this, come back after me. Um, for doing nothing more than uh, fighting for the rights and freedoms and liberties of others, including myself. But uh, that being said, that's in the middle of a trademark dispute. And, uh, you know, people want to know what's up. That's what's up. Uh, people have asked me about the, the uh, Branch McMaster, um, you know, uh, lawsuit. And I keep saying, you know, go to, go to their website because they, they'll update accordingly. Um, right now, they're just playing the long game. Um, really. <coughs> Damn it. Get some high voltage product. Um, that's a good question. Um, again, high voltage. If you live in Vancouver here, you can find them in the, some of the various underground dispensaries that are still around. Um, such as stressed and depressed is a good place you can find them uh, and there's a few other dispensaries I don't want to get into naming out a bunch of people that I don't necessarily work with um, But then again, I have a lot of respect for David Malmovine and that's his location and DML as we know him here You know again, you got to give respect back to the people that helped to get us to where we are and I've been um, You know attending these events with David for years and um, It is what it is so um yeah but um if you know where if you are able to get distressed and depressed i don't know if they do online deliveries just look them up and check out their website and see if you can't get a home delivery and that's how you would be able to get a hold of high voltage until such time as i'm able to uh point you to someone out somewhere else so right now i'm just going to the website here into class actions and um You know, we got to get settled soon when they got like six other privacy cases filed already ahead of us. But, um, we'll start off here. I'm going to send this over. All right. So, <clears throat> this is the marijuana privacy breach. And as you guys can see up here, um, it's listed right in the top as the, uh,
Alright, so <coughs> this link here. So I'll put that in the chat, but medical marijuana privacy breach. Um, this was started quite a while back. I think 2013 I started this. Um, so I'm just trying to find. Um, So I'm just trying to find um, do, 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 do. Holy cow. I must be stolen from that. Can't even find my own damn, uh. Oh, damn, part of this. It wouldn't be at the very bottom, be at the very start when we filed it. Do 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 do. Interesting. Well, here's one part. This is one update here. Um, they say the federal government brought a motion seeking to compel Jason Wilcox to provide okay, answers to part. questions which here. were refused um, during his cross-examination and affidavit on May 5th, 2014. The federal government or the federal court refused um, the federal government's motion. Still, all the questions for which answers were sought related to Mr. Wilcox personally as such information was irrelevant and overreaching uh, motion before the court. And what they were reaching for was cannabis in Canada, and they were reaching for the coalition. They wanted to know more about that. Um, so I wanted people just to see that that was a, an important part of it. Um, and I think that when it was filed, yeah, it was right here. So, um, anyway, right here, um, you can see a national class action was filed on behalf of Jason Wilcox and all Canadians whose personal and health information was compromised. So this was 2013. We're in 2019. So they got to be getting close to a settlement. I've been barred from talking about it. This is a statement of claim that anybody who says they filed the case would actually present as as their own evidence. But anyway, that's all there for you guys to keep up to date. I keep getting a lot of questions, and I simply cannot answer any more than I've answered on this show and point you to uh, the people to call is the lawyers. And uh, you're all represented. All 42,000 members of the MMAR that received that letter are covered under this class action. It's an opt-out suit. So, um, you know, it, you don't have to necessarily register. It's, it's a choice. So um, that's something that I thought was important to, to get out there. And um, let me just throw this into the chat. Um, if I can even get into the comments. I can't even get into my own comments. Interesting. All right. Just bear with me. I'm just uh, focusing in on this strange part. But anyway, there you go. That's I uh, check it out at Branch McMaster anytime, and uh, see what's going on that way. Um, because that's the only way. All along, I've been pointing to them mainly because I again privacy law. I don't know. I've been through criminal law and lots of constitutional challenges with the lawyers, but I've not done personal um, privacy law. So if the lawyers ask me not to post anything or say anything on the internet over and above X, Y, and Z, then I don't say over and above X, Y, and Z. And that's other than the cases started in 2013 by myself on behalf of y'all. And we all um, hopefully uh, will have a conclusion to this case um, in, in, in good time. And I think that that's ultimately what I'm trying to say here. 
Can you guys want to remember one thing too? I'm also at 2,987 likes. It's been a frustrating thing. People don't don't remember how important it is to hit that like button when if you're watching the show. So if you guys can do that on Facebook, um, that would be awesome to push me over that 3,000 mark. Um, I probably should have said that way way earlier in the show um, rather than now. But we are approaching the 144 mark, so we got 15 minutes left, and we are shutting her down. So um, you know. It is what it is. Oh. Yeah, it's a like button that's on my public page. Um, that's the one that matters, guys. And I do appreciate any likes that get out there. And I'm glad that at least this one was able to get out. And um, this particular uh, this particular live feed was able to get out to the right number of people that I wanted to reach. And um, that's ultimately what matters. And if you have any questions, again, at, at this, this is the time to ask them. Because if you walk away from this show and say, well, I don't know how deep I should bury my seed. Or I don't know what the environment should be. Or I don't, I don't know what methodology to use. Then we should talk about it. That's why, that's why we do the show. Like I really want, I really want to help. And uh, and if you have any comments on the LPs using their garbage, um, and uh, and whether they have a recycling plan or not, I think it was a bad business plan to begin with, to order all these cheap plastic containers from China, you know, to save money, and not think about the environment or the the, the potential environmental damage that they were going to inflict on our peoples. And I think that this, these are all things that we as a people need to look at. Um, this isn't a, a one-way uh, one, one ticket by any means. Um, yeah, that's for sure. It's only on Facebook, though. Huh? No, nah, we're on YouTube, so. Not a Facebook fan. No, it's all good. Um, the one thing is we don't pull people into... Uh, we, well, we, we could pull people into a chat. Like, I could pull Justin into a chat on uh, on Facebook. The only problem is that you guys wouldn't be able to uh, hear him on YouTube. The only way we can do that is to Skype people in, which we will be doing. Um, again, this is the first Sunday show. It was dr uh, driven. It was only going to be going for one hour. I went into the second hour only because we wanted to cover the LP garbage thing. Um, because it's a big... It's you know if you're a multi-million dollar corporation and you're ordering you, so somebody had to stop and think am I not ordering something that could be toxic for the environment or how are we, you know is it gonna fill up the landfill nobody cared they we're only talking they're saying right after legalization they started to talk about it well they should have been talking about it before legalization and long before legalization and implementing something that other than there was no need for plastic containers to begin with. Other than Save the Kids campaign. I haven't heard the government drop Save the Kids or make a commercial Save the Kids other than driving at all. What happened to that? Is that because the licensed producers are signing deals with gummy bear makers from America? Maybe that's part of the thing. That's right. Canada's allowed to buy weed from other companies, even if they are quasi-illegal in America at the state level, but not the federal level. There's a lot of stuff that we could talk about, but when it comes back to the to, to knowing your seeds, soak your seeds 12 hours. You know you really don't need to soak them any more than that. It's enough to soak the husk. The main reason you're doing it, um, it's smart to sterilize your seeds. Um, that was a good comment. Thank you to that viewer, whoever it was that made that comment. Um, using peroxide, um, uh, you could even use bleach if you just again it's making sure you use a very very a small amount. It's about the diluted amount. And it's simply to kill any fungicide that may exist uh, on the seeds. And that's very important to make sure you get rid of. And um, yeah, and, and, and again, keeping in mind that if you're dealing with storing your seeds um, or growing them, you know, they still need to be between 21 and 32 degrees Celsius. If it starts to get too much hotter, you're going to end up with the humidity as aspect. And that humidity aspect is going to ruin your seeds and cause fungus. So this is a part of the reason that, like I said, this has a humidity pack in it. Like I showed you guys, um, it comes with a humidity pack so that these seeds, no matter what, are dry at all times. So, you know, aside from me 
going out and letting the birds get at them you know um, making plugs is the best way um, I actually look forward to growing it I look this strain up and it, it's actually a popular strain check it out mm7 um, it has its lineage um, you know it's, it's an actual stable strain so I look forward to uh, to growing it and and uh, and showing you guys how it plays out and thank you to that grower they know who they are um, it was a wonderful gift and um, yeah as we continue to close out here I'm going to do another dab I'm gonna go fuck I'm gonna do some of this crumble one of these is a crumble that's a resin that's a sauce and that's a resin okay well there's two resins and a sauce so I thought there was a crumble they also come with these crumbles they call them crumble and that stuff's different than the live resin. It's kind of very interesting. These high voltage guys, they got their shit down. Like I said, I almost grew myself out a couple times. And I'm taking bigger and bigger dabs as we close out the show. Um, so if I do pass out, don't worry. I'll wake up numb on the floor eventually. Don't panic. It's only cannabis. I'm just fucking with y'all, don't worry. But my god, does that taste good. I mean, hats off to high voltage once again. Because you're looking for that taste. You're not hearing me cough my head off. Um, you know, I'm not having to go for a glass of water. I'm still drinking lukewarm coffee. Uh, from the beginning of the show, somehow it's managed to stay lukewarm for two hours. Well, I should probably take a commercial break. And actually get fucking this heated up, but we're closing out. We got enough time. We got ten minutes left. I can hang in there in ten minutes. And then get to order some pizza. Or go for a sub. <coughs> One or the other. I think I might go for a sub. <coughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, Justin, I know you're hitting on something, man, because you got you got it going on down there. I got to come visit you and get taught how to get upgraded on my extractions when it comes to rotavapes and ovens and, um, as most importantly, rosin. You've got rosin tech down um, to a patent, is my understanding. So for us, it's just a drive over the mountains, man. It's only the Rocky Mountains. No big deal, but it's fun driving the mountains. Dude, I, I feel great driving the mountains. Um now taking Vicky with me, that's different. She's not so good in cars. But after two head on collisions, you can't blame her. <coughs> oh, oh, oh man. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I said I was gonna go bigger, shouldn't it? <coughs> oh that <was> snappy. <sighs> Damn it, it's still smoking. I can't fucking do nothing about it. So again, if anybody can remember, what does small seeds tell me? If somebody puts a bunch of small, tiny little seeds in front of you, but they're molted and they look like they're mature, what does that tell you about the seed? Can anybody remember? Nobody remembers? Oh, you, oh the guy remember there's some delay here. So I gotta let YouTube catch up with that question. But Correct, Sativa. Thank you, Fred Fur Fury. That uh, is a sativa, sativa dominant seed. And if it's an extremely fat seed, then you've got a very indica dominant seed. And everything in between is hybrids. <coughs> it's actually interesting. There are there are some changes. I mean, CF Gannicas can act a little funny <coughs> with their seed size. <coughs> and they're from the Afghan region. They're a very strange. They're, I mean, people have had them as species as, uh, of their own at one time. Um, nowadays, they don't. They, they say all land races are dead, gone, diminished, and um, yeah, we got about seven minutes left here, so uh, eight minutes left. Sorry, <coughs> nope, seven minutes. <coughs> so in the closing seven minutes, um, is there any other questions on seed germination? Because that's what tonight was all about, making sure that people walk away from the show knowing a lot about. Um, seed germination and showing that you can smoke the highest most strongest potent dabs um, high, high voltage by far is 
one of those is in that class again if they they can compete in any competition i'm sure uh and wins hands down so again hats off to to, to that company and uh it, it was no different than uh than doing the six i mean their flower was just that good so you can't you can't knock a dispensary and i know some people are saying well i don't like the price i'm thinking look man it's still the underground and you're getting real cannabis you're not getting some friggin weak ass friggin twig stuff you know that's been potentially gamma processed you know they don't tell you before you buy it and i think they should have to label it's been gamma processed i'm not sure if they do yet or not i don't actually know much about the lp market because i don't buy from them <coughs> but big fat seeds will give you something like this a pure indica big fat wide leaves like this you know with anywhere from five to nine you know well, again the the more the more lesser number of leaves i do have a pure c afghanica that i just killed because unfortunately it was showing signs of hermaphrodism early on so it, i killed it out of an abundance of caution um and again that's part of of seed searching and uh i've been seed searching for 20 years now um if not longer and uh and it's fine because when you find the right two you try to combine them and you try to think that that's what's going to get what you want and sometimes you get what you want but it's not stable it's it's like 70 percent female and 30 percent male you got to back cross it again so that's why you always save a male until you're sure that you're done breeding with that particular male with that particular pollen or you save the pollen in the freezer or in the fridge well not freezer but in the fridge uh, save your save your pollen um, how whatever it is that you want to do it's very important um, things that uh, that matter for everybody and with five minutes left to go um, I'm still looking for any other um, any other questions I'm watching both chats <coughs> thanks Patty <coughs> well we know it's a good show when we're holding you know 40 people collectively between two networks you know then that's 40 people that are now knows how to germinate seeds and if you walk away from the show not knowing how to germinate a seed well uh then there's a problem and uh, always remember you can go back to my youtube channel and look up germinating seeds and uh, though they've ripped down my main my main one i'll have one back up there soon enough um like i put up there tonight or you can simply rewatch this video and fast forward past all my chatty uh talking and um and simply get to the uh get to the good stuff and um and and watch the video because it really it, it sets forth how simplistic it, uh, everything really is so um yeah I'm looking for my goddamn dancing gorilla that usually i can find easy i was happy i found him again now i can't find him he's like got me again oh there he is uh, put them on top of the bomb. Dancing grill on the bomb. How's that? Make the dancing grill on the bomb. What's up, GZ420? GZ. GZ. You know I'm getting fucking stoned. I'm gonna order some pizza. I gotta keep doing more down, so. <coughs> really storms up your appetite. You gotta be careful, though. It's stuff also couch locks. It makes you be stupid, so. I'm just watching this time. I got three minutes left. So, um, my Toronto 420 almost lost 100,000 viewers. Yeah, no, there's something weird. I mean, they took 80 videos down of mine. Now they put 50, 50 of them back. I don't know what YouTube's doing. Um, I really don't care. All, all my shit's legitimate. So, um, I'm really not too worried. It's just more, um, what are they doing? And it's happening on Facebook. It's happening on Instagram um facebook our, our our facebook group that had um almost fifteen thousand people all of a sudden had ten thousand people um why this is happening other facebook groups completely disappeared and we're gone all together so what can i say um there's something going on bigger than us and i think it's controlling the narrative if they can control social media and stop us from talking about how we legalize in canada in a way that we can still grow our plants still make our oils still have cannabis in all of its forms they don't have the charter rights and freedoms in the other commonwealth countries that we have and that's what they they're missing uh our right to liberty is so fundamental here uh the autonomous use of the body that they have to show harm either to the public or to the person and if they fail to show harm then the autonomous use of the body stands it's a world health organization constitutional right as well so we need to look at that from that perspective and with that note, CBD recently being classified as a 
uh, as a medication, once again, tells you a lot. That's the World Health Organization. I've been telling you guys for four years, this is a global, or five, six years now, this has been global legalization. Canada is just a footprint. All eyes are on us only because they want to see how our people react. So they know how their people are going to generally react and they can have better preparation to deal with them. I had like four of my shows talking about them banned in, in like seven countries. And I bet you those seven countries are countries that are legalizing. Because there would be a reason not to want us talking about this. And it's not because the people are going to rise up and start growing cannabis and become a danger to society. You know, forget the fentanyl crisis that's killing everybody and all the ch and stuff being imported from Asia. Um, forget that, you know, and talk about how we need to save the kids for cannabis long enough to get yourselves in in infrastructure set up. But now it's okay if the uh, licensed producers sell gummy bears as long as it's packaged right. Kind of a hypocrisy in a democracy once again. Definitely low temp dabs. I got to get her to turn this up a bit. <coughs> but we are approaching the two hour mark, and this is the end of Cannabis in Canada's first Sunday night, five o'clock show. Stay tuned. We will have weekly guests um, from time to time, and uh, we'll definitely always go live or have somebody from our team uh, on here live. I can bring them in through our broadcaster, and they can always go live. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for tuning in. Tuning in. Stay blessed up. If you got your seeds, pop them. Um, if you got them, pop them. You have nothing to lose by popping. You can grow them in your windowsill at this time of the year. So uh, with the right to grow four plants, there's no reason to stop you from growing your four plants. On that note, I love you all. This is Jason Wilcox signing out. It's April 28, 2019, and I wish everyone a blessed up night.